welcome to another episode of Professional Spotlight. I'm Shuvi Powers. I'm the Director of PR and Social Media with Girls in Tech. My guest today is Kate Agnew. She is the former Managing Director of Girls in Tech, and she's also an e-commerce business analyst working at Target. She has also received her bachelor's degree in mathematics from McAllister. Welcome, Kate. Thank you. So, Kate, would you like to take a minute and add to what I said? Tell our viewers that haven't had the opportunity to meet you a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. I've been at Target now for three years. I started in their technology leadership program, um, and that was really my first, well, one first professional role within technology, but also the first time that I had really found an interest in technology. Um, I knew that I wanted to do something with my math degree, but I didn't know what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And growing up, I always had a passion for technology, but never saw myself actually working in it. Sure. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it kind of took me by surprise that this is the field that I ended up in, uh, but I've really enjoyed it. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit about or more about how you got interested in technology. Yeah, so I first built a website that like, I taught myself how to do is on GeoCities. It had all the, the flashy like, backgrounds and all that type of stuff. Uh, but I taught myself how to build it with HTML. Okay. It was a fantastic Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen fan site. Uh, so I actually, I actually just recently found it again on like the old archives of GeoCities. I'm pretty, pretty proud of my like fourth grade year old self. Nice. So that's the first time that I really found that passion for tech. Yeah. Uh, and then after that I was in the Lego League when I was in sixth grade in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I would have continued doing that had I remained living in the Twin Cities. But at the time, my parents moved out to a suburb, which meant they didn't have programs like that. Yeah. Tell us about what you do specifically um, as your role as business analyst at Target. Oh, sure. Uh, so I work within the technically the e-commerce space, okay. um, which is like .com. But I work on all of the in-store experiences that involve the data from .com. Uh, so if you think about like the TV wall that we have for advertising, we also have a video game preview station that goes through video game trailers. Uh, we have a lot of um, like the welcome board that pulls in data from online to make it more local. Those are the types of experiences that I manage, both the hardware and software for. Um, I'll do vendor evaluations. I will escalate issues if there are recurring problems, things like that. Um, I also get to do a lot of other fun things within my role. For example, today I have been live tweeting my first experience using Target's rush order shipping. Oh. Uh, so it started in a team meeting this morning where they like made me go up and present and actually check out in the meeting on my Target.com order for a video game. And then I did the rush shipping, which means it should be to my house when I get home. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's a sample, but then they have me live tweeting it like, oh, I'm so excited for my package to get here today and <laughs> things like that. So it's cool that they really allow me to be myself, which is someone who loves Twitter. Yeah. And then they use that, you know, and integrate it into my role. Very cool. That's exciting. Yeah, it's fun. Um, so tell me a little bit about if you have increased your skill set over the years, formally or otherwise. Yeah, that's a good question. Since school, uh, I haven't done much in terms of learning another language, but uh, this summer I'm actually planning on learning Python. Nice. Um, so I'm going to go through all of the classes that they have in Code Academy, and I think that that will be a good basis. And then I think that there are a couple other uh, programs that I'll get involved with. And then when I start school, I'm going to graduate school next year. Uh, when I start school there, I'll also look for any types of technology-centric classes I can take. Okay. We should tell our viewers you're pursuing your MBA, right? Yes, okay. yes. I will be going to business school starting in September. Okay. Yes. Very cool. Which is why I'm no longer the managing director of Girls in Tech. Yes. So. And saying goodbye to Target shortly. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if you could do something else, Kate, what would it be? I have a passion for the entertainment industry. Okay. I am the type of person that can go and watch a movie filming on a street in Chicago and sit there for hours on end just because I'm so enamored with the experience and the equipment that they use and trying to imagine them piecing together all of those takes into ultimately a movie. 
Uh, so I think that I would like to do something within the entertainment industry. Maybe I would be a producer or something of big action movies. I like uh, superhero movies, so maybe I would start the Superwoman series and make it like as big as all of the other Marvel comic movies are right now. I can see it happening. You should totally do it. I will. <laughs> all right, tell us, um, what's the best career advice you've ever received? The one that I like is ask for forgiveness, not for permission. I think that, especially being new in my career, that works out really nicely. <laughs> uh, and I think that I'm not going to do anything that I know like is inherently wrong. Sure. But I think that thinking that way also gives an onus of ownership to people. Uh, being able to make decisions, whether or not they're going to be the right ones, is really empowering and I think that employees need that. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so you've been very passionate about girls in tech. Can you tell us a little bit about what was the driving force? It started right after I graduated from college when I first got my job in technology. And at Target, I would say that it's not as obvious of a like gender disparity within technology. There are a lot of women. Uh, but from like the conferences I would go to and vendor meetings, it was very clear to me that it was a male-dominated field. Mm -hmm. And realizing that, I wanted to connect with other women in the Twin Cities that had similar backgrounds and passions. So the first event that I went to was just a happy hour, and I remember falling in love with everyone there because they were talking about video games, and I had never met other women that had played video games. And we're excited about it. Exactly. Yeah. So it was really exciting. And... I'm the type of person that just dives straight in, so I became the PR and social media director after that, and within a few months I was the managing director. Okay, very cool. So over the last few months I've gotten to know you fairly well, and I know that your wheels are constantly moving, you're always thinking about something, so what is it that you're working on right now that you're really excited about? So I'm actually working on two projects. Uh, but there's one that I'm even more excited about, so that's where all my excitement is today, okay. and that's what I'll talk about. Okay. Uh, so I am running a Kickstarter campaign to create a donut book. Oh. Uh, I currently have it called Donut Porn for the Coffee Table. Okay. I'm not sure if that will stick, but it's kind of catchy. It is. Uh, the idea will be to incorporate pictures of various donuts uh, from across the United States. So I'm hoping to do a little bit of traveling to get some unique pictures in there. Actually, later this month, I am going to Kentucky uh, to see Miley Cyrus in concert because I missed her in the Twin Cities. Okay. And I found a donut shop in Kentucky that you are able to completely make your own. So oh. they give you like a clean donut and you get to do the frosting and all the toppings. Nice. So I'm really excited to go there and hopefully take some pictures of really unique donuts. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a really fun idea. We wish you the best, and we will let our listeners know what your Kickstarter is called so they can help contribute to it. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, Kate, if you were an inanimate object, what would you be? I would be an Oreo. And not <laughs> one that gets eaten, but that big, thick Oreo that's on the commercials for, um, like, Pride Weekend, where it has, like, every color of frosting in the middle. Oh. I think it's just so beautiful, and I love Oreos, and it's like a combination of the two. Okay. And no one would eat it. One, because it's more like something just for looks, but it's so tall that I don't think you could wrap your mouth around it. I guess you could twist it apart and eat it layer by layer. Me. And eat. dip it in milk. Yeah. Of course. yeah. I'm di allergic to dairy. Soy milk. Yeah. Almond yeah, milk. Almond milk. All right, Kate, do you have any last words for our viewers today? All I have to say is that I'm so excited that we have started doing this series. Um, we kind of came up with the idea together of wanting to engage more younger girls in technology, and I think that the way you can do that is by showing them role models. Uh, so it's just really exciting for me to now be a part of this yeah. on the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we love having you here. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you. And I'd like to thank you again for joining me for another episode of Professional Spotlight. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter if you haven't done so already. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Olson for hosting us here again today. Thanks again. I'm Shubi Powers. Bye-bye.